eccentric type exercise because concentric exercises are just going to put all the load in the muscle belly. We're not going to get a whole bunch of load <coughs> in the tendon. So there's now a bunch of research on eccentric loading for supraspinatus problems, for uh, lateral epicondylosis problems, or patellar tendon problems. And if you look at it, it's all going into that lengthened position of of whatever joint you are, or whatever tendon you're trying to to rehabilitate, because that's what's going to put the load through the tendon to try to get the tendon to sort of reorganize and unwind. Okay, so that's the whole basis of why we test those in, in those groups. Eccentric loading. So <coughs> eccentric loading is is basically doing the negative. So if, if we were going to eccentrically load um, a, a patellar tendon, which is probably had the most research on it. If, if what we want to do is we want to do the negative part, we don't want to do the concentric part. Okay? So <clears throat> concentrically, the squat, you're going to go down and then back up, right? If we're going to eccentric load the patellar tendon, let's say we have a, a problem on the right leg, we're going to go down, 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 the eccentric, the negative part. And then we're going to use our other leg to bring us back up so we don't have to do that concentric part. That way, we do the exercise, but we keep all the load on the tendon. We don't actually use the, the muscles around here, which are going to continually pull on that tendon to actually go through the second part of the exercise. Does that make sense? Same thing <clears throat> with the lateral epicondylosis. Usually, or before, when we thought it was an inflammatory problem, we used to say, okay, we'll start down here with the weight and, and continually do this. Well, all we're really doing is we're just continually keeping all of this rather irritated. But if you start up here and then you slowly do the negative, which is the eccentric part, what we're doing is we're continually pulling on that tendon to try to get it to come on. When we get down here, we use our other hand to lift it back up so we don't have to take any load that way, and then slowly lower it down again. The whole concept came from um, uh, Sweden, I believe, where they used to start uh, with eccentric loading of the Achilles, and it morphed into patellar tendon and then supraspinatus and uh, lateral epicondylosis. But the, the whole rule applies to any tendon injury that you may have or to diagnose. Why do we say, you know, do the eccentric and then, you know, bring yourself up with the good leg? Would it be that much damaging if you brought it up concentrically? I think the problem would be that you would fatigue the muscle yeah. before you put enough load into the tendon to cause a uh, rebuilding effect. Because you're trying, you're trying to... Um, you're trying to load the muscle, or sorry, you're trying to load the tendon as much as possible in order to get the the, the benefit of remodeling of the tendon in order to um, to get the the, uh, the pain sensitivity in the tendon to, to decrease. But if you keep going with the concentric, you'll only get a certain amount of reps that will never actually get into the tendon loading. Does that make sense? And they've done studies showing that this is superior to what? Like, what, what were the comparisons of this? Um, well, in a lot of the, uh, uh, like when they first started in the Achilles, it was, they were doing it instead of, instead of surgery. Um, a lot of them, the, the problem with the research, there is a problem, is they don't often have a comparison group. So they'll, they'll come out of orthopedic type uh, clinics or hospitals and they'll have these tendon issues that they've diagnosed and then they just put them through this rehab program and then they, they monitor them through the program. But there's not actually a, a group where they've given something else for the most part. That's the problem with the research. But in those groups they are showing significant results, both on imaging, so ultrasound, um, and uh, clinical. The reasons why we're doing the eccentric loading is that the histologically they found, a guy named Alfredson found, that when you have tendinopathies, what one of the major problems is is you have a new influx or a new growth of blood vessels into the tendon. So you have angiogenesis into the tendon. And with every uh, blood vessel that grows into the tendon, you have a nerve that's going to follow that blood vessel. Hence one of the reasons why they believe that tendinopathies and degenerative tendons have um, a pain associated with them. So one of the things that the eccentric loading has been shown to do is to actually kill the new blood vessels so that there is the angiogenesis that had gone and perforated the tendon um, dies and therefore they get uh, results pain-wise, the pain levels go down. So 
when you're doing an eccentric program, you're doing a few things. Number one, they've shown that you're um, upregulating uh, collagen synthesis in the tendon. Number two, they show that you're you're killing this new um, blood supply, which which is actually a bad thing to have. And number three, you're actually building up a pain tolerance. So you're giving the tendon so much load, and you're getting it used to so much load that when you then put the person back into, let's say, gameplay, the amount of loads associated with gameplay uh, are far lower than what you got the tendon accustomed to by doing your eccentric training. That's why when you're doing an eccentric program, as opposed to other rehabilitation programs, they say don't train into the pain, like don't exercise into the pain. With tendon rehabilitation, they actually tell you to exercise into the pain. So when you feel that pain, do 10 more reps. So you're actually using pain and building um, load tolerance and pain tolerance by doing the eccentric uh, uh, training or program. Anybody? Now, based on the research that we just talked about, that newer research that says early on in tendon problems, there actually is some inflammation that occurs. Uh, the way that I'm going to just change my protocols is to probably not assign eccentric programs immediately upon diagnosis, but to treat the person um, for the little bit of inflammation that might be present first, and then gradually bring them into a um, into a an eccentric program. What I personally have been doing is I've been using the Pales contraction. So I've been using um, the progressive angular isometric loading as a first step, and then use that to increase uh, load tolerance in order to then bring them into an eccentric uh, type contraction. Because eccentric contraction is a huge amount of load for that tendon to sustain. But if you're using isometric contractions at increasing angles, you're increasing the load tolerance over uh, an arc of motion, and then you're progressing them into a more dynamic eccentric type exercise. Any questions for that?